Hello, um, I'm Ruth Slavid. I am the editor of Landscape and I've been editing the journal for three years. I just want to tell you a little bit about me. I'm a freelance architectural journalist. I have a wide experience of editing and of writing, including I've written seven books about architecture. I'm obviously not a landscape architect, but I do find the subject absolutely fascinating and I'm very fortunate to be assisted in this role by some fabulous people. Um, obviously there's the editorial advisory panel, um, there's the honorary editor Tim Waterman um, and there is Paul Lincoln at the Landscape Institute. Um, but anyway, this shouldn't all be about me. So in a minute I'm going to disappear and I'm going to show you a bit of a presentation um, about the journal and the other associated things that we do. And as Lauren said, we will deal with questions at the end, but do please send them in as and when you want to, and then I will talk about them at the end. Um, if I don't have time to answer them all, I apologize. And if none of you ask any questions, I'll have to make up my own questions. So it would be better if you did send them in. Um, okay, so I'm going to move over now to a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, I suppose I should apologize for having a PowerPoint presentation, having read an article this morning in The Guardian about how it is the death of critical thought, but I hope this is fairly straightforward. How to get published in landscape. Um, so landscape is published by Dark Horse which is a, an excellent design company, which is based in the northwest of England. Dark Horse has the contract to publish Landscape, and I am a subcontractor effectively to Dark Horse, or the, who I work with very, very happily, but of course I do also have a direct relationship with the Institute. Um, there we are, I've said that already. So what do we do? Um, we are responsible for landscape, we're also responsible for Vista, and we are responsible for the online news. And I'm going to talk you through each of those, in fact, in reverse order. So the online news, um, which I hope you have all seen, um, it's in the news section on the LI website. Um, and we publish every we produce a newsletter every fortnight and we publish basically some pretty short stories. I'm just showing you these in my presentation because I don't want to do anything as scary as actually going onto the website. Who are our stories for? Well, of course, they're mostly from members of the landscape profession and that's the way we write them. But it's worth remembering that anybody can choose to subscribe to the newsletter. So in fact, they can go to a much wider audience. Um, and I know that the readership is actually larger than the number of members of the profession. So how does it all work? Um, it's my responsibility um, to write the stories. In fact, I work with a freelance journalist who writes some of them for me. I produce a news list, uh, which I send to the Landscape Institute, and they will approve my choice of stories and also add others. Uh, and then once the stories are written and before they're live, they are checked by the Landscape Institute and I make any changes that they ask me to. Um, I send the information to Dark Horse who put together the fortnightly newsletter that goes out that I hope you all subscribe to. Um, and then that is sent out by the Landscape Institute. Uh, there are a number of stages of checking which I'm not going to bore you with. So what are we interested in? Well, we're certainly interested in your projects or your practices projects, and we're interested in them at times which are newsworthy. So those will be when you win work or when you get planning permission or when you complete the project or when you win an award. Um, well, I'm not talking about the Landscape Institute Awards, which obviously we cover in great detail, uh, but in the journal and they're covered on the website. I'm talking about all those other awards which we would be interested in as well. And what else are we interested in? Well, we're interested in news about your business. 
opening a new office, celebrating a big anniversary, promotions, recruitment, but we will talk about that a little bit when we come to VISTA. We are interested in competitions. Um, we're interested when competitions are launched, and we're also interested in the results of them. Um, we are interested in technical news. Um, so, you know, for example, obviously there are all those big stories which will be an ongoing issue about uh, Chalara die, Ash dieback, um, that sort of thing, or anyone coming up with new ways of addressing things. Um, we are interested to an extent in publications and books. We are certainly interested in reviewing events. And there is also a blog section um, on the website, which actually I'm not responsible for, but um, that's the responsibility of Vicky at the Landscape Institute. But if anyone has any ideas for interesting blog posts, um, do send them to me and I can send them on. Um, in terms of sending things to me, by the way, uh, we will, I will give you contact details at the end of this presentation. So, what do we need? If you think you have a really good story, um, we need the information that will allow us to write it. And that means answering those questions which every news journalist has done into them. Who, what, where and when? Why? Why did you, you know? Why did you do this? Why is it interesting? How was it done? And the last one, which may or may not be confidential, but if you can tell us how much, how much did it cost? What else do we want? We want pictures, and we also want contact details so that we can come to you and say, can you tell us a bit more about this? I don't quite understand that. And of course, if we have your contact details, you do have to be willing to respond when we get in touch. I would just say briefly that um, I know sometimes people think that we write about the same practices all the time in the news. And hands up, I think that's true to an extent. The reason is that they send us lots of information and lots of pictures and other people don't. So the more different practices we hear from, the larger the range of stories that we can run. Although obviously there is a limit to how many stories we can run. So in busy news weeks, we can't, or news fortnights, we can't do everything. We run, I would say 10 to 12 news stories a fortnight, which is plenty for people to read and plenty for us to work on. Okay, so now Vista. Uh, this is the cover of the last issue of Vista, which I hope you saw. Um, like Landscape, it's quarterly, and in fact, it's sent out with the journal, so that's where you should have seen it. Um, and it has news in it about the Landscape Institute and about its members. So for those of you who've been around for a while, um, Vista was a previous publication uh, by the Landscape Institute, and it was very much loved and highly regarded, um, and it's been revived, in particular for people who cherish hard copy. Um, and I think that's all sorts of people. I've talked to some very young practitioners who actually find it much easier to sit down and read a copy of Vista than have to keep staring at their screen when they've been doing so up so many other things. And because of the nature of its content, most of the information is generated by the Landscape Institute. But there are ways in which you can contribute. One of them is um, that from the next issue of Vista, there will be a letters section. Uh, you, you may have noticed a notice about it in the previous issue. And we do also run information about people. So again, what I was talking to you about in terms of news, if you've got a promotion, if somebody new has been appointed, um, if somebody has received an honour, there are all sorts of things. And there is a column about people in Vista. Um, and that's quite a good place to show those things and celebrate them. And again, if you do have a photograph, send it because sometimes we can use them and sometimes we can't. It's really a way of talking to your peers and telling them what you're up to. 
So now the big one, because I think this is where everybody would really love to be published. And this is Landscape, the journal. And you can see here five covers. And I just want to explain to you a little bit about how it works before talking to you about the kind of contribution that you would be able to make. So some of this I know you know, but it's worth just spelling it out. The journal is quarterly. Um, it is about landscape, not about the Landscape Institute. Um, so in a way, the fact that Vista has been relaunched is a way of making that differentiation even stronger. It's aimed at Landscape Institute members, who indeed are the people who receive it. Um, it's accessible um, both in the way that it's written and in the way that it's produced and designed and laid out. Um, in fact, a lot of effort has gone into things like legibility. Um, accessible, by the way, does not mean dumbed down, but it just means not being obfuscating. Um, a lot of effort has gone into the design. Um, as I said, Dark Horse has been responsible for it for just over three years, and there have been two evolutions of the design. Um, they have not been radical changes. They have been very carefully thought through improvements um, through what the people at Dark Horse thought, what I thought, what the EAP thought, and um, very much in response as well to the findings of the Allies Communication Survey. Um, so we aim to be informative, to have good technical content, um, to be useful, and we very much hope from time to time to be inspirational. So I'm just showing you the contents page to make it clear that there really is not an enormous amount of space. We have four issues a year, and as far as um, determining content is concerned, it's really more like three and a half issues because our autumn issue is um, carries the awards and therefore the rest of the content is squeezed somewhat. So just look at this. Um, there are one, two, three, four features. We might have five or six and some regulars on the left um, with my editorial, bigger picture, some technical content, practice, and um, Tim Waterman's column, a word at the end. So we are really keen to get contributions. They have to be very appealing to win a place in the journal. So where can you? We really want your contributions and we want ideas. So where can you make them? I'm just going to look through some of the sections of the journal. So I'm starting with a bigger picture. Um, this is the most recent one that we did and I'm leaving it up on the screen for a second because it's just so lovely. Um, this is work by an artist and who is very interested in landscape. Uh, she's not a landscape architect. Um, and it's just to give you a sense of the kind of things we can have. Uh, we're looking for something that's visually unusual. We're not just looking for a lovely picture of a landscape project because there are other ways of showing those. We're looking for an image alongside which we can tell a story. Uh, we're looking for something which is relevant to the profession. We're looking for something which is inspirational and we are looking for a piece of a bit of eye candy. Um, we want to have really good images throughout the journal. Um, we hope they are good that, and that that makes the whole journal visually pleasing. But outside bigger picture, the images really do have to work for a living. They have to be informative and helping to tell a story or inform the reader. Here we are just having the great joy of seeing the images. So it may be that you have done something fantastic, but really with bigger picture, um, it's really great to get some ideas in. Um, and you could suggest an idea that you've seen in an exhibition or in a newspaper or in a magazine or a piece of work that a friend has done or a piece of your own work. 
um, I would say that we are both trying to set the bar as high as we can in terms of quality. And also sometimes if you've seen things elsewhere, um, we may not be able to get permission to use them. Or in one case, we'd seen some fantastic photography and actually it only existed in a low resolution form and we couldn't get anything we could use. So ideas really welcome. And the more ideas we have, the better the bigger pictures will be. But for those reasons, it may be that we can't proceed with your idea. OK, so we're now coming on to projects. And this is just the first opening spread of one of our features. Um, this is on um, HTA's work at Bexhill on Sea. Um, lovely big strong image to open it with, and there are more within the piece. So what are we looking for in terms of projects? Um, well, they should be recently completed, certainly within the, the last couple of years. They should have be above average in interest. Um, I don't believe that the journal should be showing mundane work. I think we have to show the best and the most aspirational and then explain what it is that people have done to make that the best. And I think that has lessons that everybody can learn. There should be a good story to tell. So for example, in the Bex Hill project, um, it's a lovely reimagining of the promenade. Um, we talked in some detail about the sort of planting that was done and how it was thought through. But there was also a story about the fact that this was part of the regeneration of Bex Hill and particularly an idea of leading uh, visitors away from the honeypot of the Delaware Pavilion to actually the rest of the town which really needed it. I don't mean that everything has to be to do with regeneration, but it is great if there is a story to tell. Um, we need a cooperative design team and client. Um, otherwise, we just won't be able to do our feature. Um, the project ideally should have been photographed and photographed either professionally or at the, at the least at the very highest amateur level. Or sometimes it may not have been and we may need to commission photography, but um, we prefer it if there are images already there. And finally, it doesn't have to be a British project. Um, it could be from anywhere in the world. So there we are, that's, that's a bit freer. Now, how can you get involved? Well, you may have worked on a really fantastic project, in which case you can tell me about it. And if we think it's the right thing, um, either I will write about it or I will commission somebody to write about it, who may be another journalist, who may be a landscape architect. Uh, my preference is that people don't write about their own projects. But you may tell me about another project that you've seen. And in that case, um, you might be willing to write about it. Uh, but you don't have to be. It's just the more antennae we have finding out about the exciting stuff that's happening, the better we can do. Um, this is our technical section. And this is an article about uh, green roof myths. And it's really done through an interview with uh, Dusty Gedge, who is Mr. Green Roof and has rethought his ideas um, in the light of experience. I think in an ideal world that would have been written by Dusty, but he was too busy to write it. So I wrote it. And here we go how you can get involved in technical pieces. Do you have a special area of expertise? Have you perhaps completed a piece of research? Have you got some specialist knowledge that you would like to share? Is there something that you've learnt in the course of your practice or in a study that you've done which you think would enrich other, other members of the landscape profession, enrich them in terms of their knowledge, not in terms of money? Um, or have you just heard about someone who's doing something really interesting? And then the question is, would you be willing to write about it? Um, if you've pulled together a lot of knowledge, um, it's quite good if you can write it. Um, and it's quite good for your practice as well. You know, it's a way of getting your 
name out there and showing yourselves as a centre of expertise. But if there's something really interesting and you don't want to write it, don't be put off because of that. Um, practice. This is a really useful and informative article about BIM. And yes, on the next pages, there were some images. Um, I apologise, this is not the most exciting image that you've seen, but it's a really worthwhile article. So what is our practice section? It's about the business of running a practice. It's about everything really, apart from um, designing a project or doing a piece of landscape management or a piece of consultancy. It's everything except the work that you are actually doing. Um, and I think the questions are, are you doing things differently? Have you solved a particular problem? In other words, there are examples that can come from practices who are dealing with things in specific ways. There are also people outside the profession who are providing services to the profession and may well have an insight on practice issues. So, you know, we've that's not the only article we've run on BIM and it's certainly not the only article that we will run on BIM. Uh, most of those have been quite general, but maybe your practice has a great insight or a very clever way of using BIM. Similarly, we're interested in legal issues, we're interested in contracts, we're interested in employment, we're interested in insurance, we're interested in management. Um, and again, you know, let me know and let me know if um, you want, would want to write something or if you're just telling me that it's interesting and we should send somebody else in to write. So what else? Okay. Topical issues. I put topical issues, but not too topical. Um, and that's because we're only quarterly and we also have quite a long lead time. So I will typically be commissioning articles a good four or five months before they'll be appearing in print. So, you know, something that's really fast moving will be much better in um in our newsletter, in the online news, rather than going into the journal. And But I mean, for example, you know, there's a whole issue of natural capital. We've got a really good guide to what that means in the next issue, um, written by someone with a great deal of expertise. Um, there are the themes that the LI is sort of constantly interested in, you know, water, housing, rural matters, education. I haven't put that one down, but that's obviously very important. There are cultural matters, um, the artistic collaborations. There are major exhibitions which may um, warrant some coverage. And there are other things as well. I, if you think something's really interesting, but I haven't covered it, then I would be really interested to hear from you about it. So how to go about it? I think the first thing is, too many people think, oh, I'd really like to talk about this. You've really got to think about it from the point of view of the reader. Think about what the reader would want to know rather than thinking about what you want to get across. You know, if I were reading the journal and I didn't know about this, would I find it really interesting? Um, be specific. I'm always interested in people who come to me and say, I would really like to write an article about this. This is really interesting. Um, I do get people who come to me and go, oh, I'd like to write something for the journal. Um, I probably don't know you. Um, I probably don't know how good a writer you are. I don't know how well you'll keep to a deadline. Um, it's quite difficult. I mean, occasionally I may come in and certainly if you say I have an area of expertise, which is this, and if you're thinking about writing something about that in the future, I would be your person. That is of interest to me. But the more specific you can be, the more likely I am to go ahead with it. Um, and an email is fine at the beginning. But what I will probably then do is ask you to send me a pitch, which is typically a paragraph length on um, what you think this piece should be about and why. So I put don't waste your time writing on spec. I mean, sometimes people have written papers for other purposes 
and they will send them in and say, do you think there's something we, you could do with this? And that's absolutely fine. But really, the last thing I want you to do is waste your time sitting down and carefully crafting a long piece just for me to say, I'm really sorry, but I don't think I can use this. So what do we commission? Typical pieces are between 1,000 and 1,800 words. We are looking for good, simple, communicative English and sound technical knowledge. Obviously, I can edit your copy um, and I will edit your copy. So, you know, if you're stumbling a little bit in your writing, that's OK, as long as I can actually understand what you're saying, trying to say. Um, don't overestimate the knowledge of all. What I mean by that is that landscape is a broad profession and different people know different things. And if in doubt, it's really worth explaining something. Um, I'm looking for high quality images that we can use with a piece. Um, we do have quite a complex permissions procedure and I need you to both give permission for images which perhaps are your practices images or if you're sourcing images from elsewhere, I need you to deal with that as well. And I'll give you a deadline and I need you to deliver to that deadline because otherwise I'll be in trouble. So. How do we get started? Well, you contact me. Um, these are my contact details. And I'm leaving those up on the screen. Uh, please don't ring now. In fact, I suddenly realised I hadn't put my phone on the silence, so I will. Um, OK. Um, that's it, really. That is the gist of my presentation. Um, now, I'm going to see what we've got in the way of questions. Yes. Right. Sorry, I'm just having a tiny technical moment. OK, um, so. Oh. There's a question from Kate. Oh, no. Okay. So it's a couple of people just putting things on about technical problems. Okay, yep. I'm just seeing who this is from. Hang on. The uh, the can't see who it's from. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just having a take. Oh, it's from Robin. Robin. Yep. Nikki. Okay. The LI has be been generally supportive of our studio, and we have ha had some articles published online. We find it much harder to get into AJ or BD. Do you have any tips on this? Um, well, I think um, it, you, it's really a version of what I was saying before. Um, and by the way, I used to work on um, AJ for 15 years, although it's changed quite a bit since I left. Um, it is, um, it's the thing I said before, you need to think about what's going to interest their readers. Um, their readers are architects and you need to think about how you're putting information over that would interest architects. Now, I know in, term, in terms of projects, again, I think you need to talk to them about um, your, your projects in a way that would interest them and, and let them come back to you. Or there may be technical content that you could propose. Um, I mean, I was looking at an old issue of the AJ today, not, not that old, I hasten to add, from earlier this year, which was talking all about... Um, you know, the greening of buildings um, and where their technical editor had, not their technical editor, their sustainability editor had talked to a number of um, organisations about their buildings. Um, so that there are ways to do it. And I think you just have to persevere a bit. Find also the person who you think is responsible. In other words, if it's a technical piece, go to the technical editor. Um, if it's a feature, go to the features editor. Just direct yourself in the right way. So, could, yes, from Joe, 
um, could the journal find space for a regular update on academic research and developments? And how about book reviews? I think the question about a regular update on anything is um, probably the answer is no, simply because we don't have the room to do anything regularly. But um, we certainly have done work on research. Um, we will do more. Um, we are planning to do a sort of survey piece looking at the um, looking at the kind of research publications that are around. And uh, yeah, I mean, really good. And in terms of book reviews, well, we have done some online. Um, we are still looking at the way we deal with that. It is an interesting thing to do. Um, it's valuable and people enjoy it. I think we just have to look at, first of all, where we would do it and whether it would be in print or whether it would be um, online because of our time scale. And secondly, we have to look at the resources that we have in terms of managing it, because I suppose the one thing I should have said to you is um, this isn't my full time job. Um, I'm doing this on a contract and I have a certain amount of time to give to it. And therefore, there are limits to what I can do. And I think that servicing a book review um, system is actually quite difficult. Yeah, OK, I've got another question here. And I can, I'm going, no, I was going to reappear, but I'm not. OK, uh, and it says, on average, what percentage of articles or features in landscape are written by landscape architects as opposed to professional writers or journalists? Um, I haven't measured that in terms of um, percentage. Um, there are some people who've written some really great stuff. Um, I mean, Jill White, for example, who is on the um, editorial advisory panel, um, wrote a great piece on um, access to open spaces for ethnic minorities. Um, if there are people who have really inter interesting subjects that they want to write about, um, I'm really happy to have them. And we had a great piece from um, Canon Ivers at LDA talking about sort of advanced manufacturing techniques. As I said, I don't really want people particularly writing about their own projects because I don't think ever that anybody is the right person to write about their projects. Um, if you're willing to write, I'd be really happy to hear from you. Um, OK, so now I've got another one from Simon Turton, um, who is at Opera PR. And it says, provided the submissions meet your requirements, are you happy to be contacted by PR agencies on behalf of a given practice? Um, the answer is yes, Simon, of course I am. Um, probably because we want pieces that are quite in depth. After that initial contact, um, we would want to talk to somebody in the practice. Sorry, there's a horrible machine noise happening here, but um, but you probably can't hear it. Um, going back to the going back to the previous question, by the way, about um, how much is written by landscape architects. I also think that um, there's another category of people who should write who are not journalists and who are not landscape architects, and um, those are people from assorted specialist uh, consultancies. So, you know, tree, BIM experts, tree experts, um, experts on natural capital, legal experts. In other words, people who can share their knowledge with the profession. Um, and now I have a question from Tim, who says, I'm interested in how the public sector can be included more in the magazine. Um, well, we're interested too. Um, we did a while ago look back on some issues and see that actually quite a lot of the things we'd written about, both issue related and project related, um, had been about the public sector. Um, the biggest example um, recently, and I'm sorry, Tim, I know this doesn't help you because you're in the southeast, but um, the biggest example was when we did a big piece about um, landscape in Sunderland. Um, I have to say that Sunderland are 
not only running a great landscape department, but they also have great communications. And I have had experiences with local authorities where I've tried to contact them and um, they've been very unhelpful. But if people are doing interesting work and, you know, we've talked to people, for example, about um, their attitudes to water. We had some really interesting conversations and wrote a piece about the work that was happening in Leicester. Um, we're certainly interested and we understand um, how important this is to a lot of people. Um, and after all, you know, whether landscape professionals are employed in the public sector or employed in the private sector, um, a great deal of their work will be to do with the public sector. Uh, I think I'm, I think that, that those are all the questions that we have. Um, I hope you found this interesting. I'm very pleased that you sent your questions in. I'm sure you all have very busy days and a lot of work to do. So thank you very much for attending and taking part. And I'm going to call this to a close now. Thank you very much indeed. Goodbye.